Hi everyone, I'm Colleen Mensa. Welcome to this space that I have created to talk all about law, lifestyle and careers. Now you'll have already seen from the title of this video what we are going to be talking about today. This is actually a requested video, but one that when I saw it was requested, I was like, yes, I actually am going to do this because I've been wanting to do it for a while and just haven't got round to it. Now I know that I was fed up of hearing the same information about researching firms. It typically goes something like this. You need to research the firm in depth and then you need to tailor your application accordingly. Okay, but what does that mean? What does that actually mean? I know that I got so sick of hearing this. So therefore, I was sick of it and I still do get sick of hearing people um, to shout advice like that, generic advice, then you must be too, and that's probably why you're watching this video. So I personally think that there's an art to this, and this is where the disclaimer comes in. Now, I'm not telling you that this is the only way that you should do it. I'm not telling you that this is the way to do it. I'm not even telling you that you should do it this way. I'm just sharing what worked for me and what I think could help other people who are in the same situation. So that's my disclaimer, let's get into it. Please get your pens and your papers ready, stop, rewind the video, take it in as many times as you need to because I do not want extra questions on this, unless it's for clarification or unless it's a follow-on question, but not, I don't want questions on something that I've already addressed in the video. So for those of you that don't know who I am, I am Colleen Mensah, I am a qualified lawyer and I had my fair share of rejections when applying for training contracts in the first round. By the second round, it's fair to say that I had cracked it and um, I received three training contract offers. I think I did, I can't remember how many back schemes I did. I don't want to give the wrong information, but I received three training contract offers, one from um, a Magic Circle firm, one from the Big Four, and one from a US firm. So it's kind of fair to say that, yeah, I, I kind of understand the trials and tribulations that come from being rejected. I even made a whole video on what it was like to receive rejection letters and read out my own personal rejection letters. I can't believe I did that. Um, and yeah, that's a whole another story for another day, but I'll link that video below in case you want to see that as well. So that's the introduction over. Let's get into this video. So the first thing I did is I went and I got a folder. This is the real folder that I used. This is what helped me get all of my training contract offers. <laughs> my goodness gracious me so after i got the folder the next thing that i did assuming you've got your short list of firms is i then went on to lawcareers.net again not a sponsored post i promise you um and what i did is i would look for the firm on there because what that website is really 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 good at doing is providing a summary of um the firm the areas that they specialize in sometimes they even had um interviews with people that were already working there, you could understand what their experience was like as a trainee and as a qualified lawyer. Um, it gives you information about like the starting salary, etc. So I thought that that was really good. So I would go on there. I would then look at the firm. I would then make notes, okay? Anything that stood out to me, included the salary. But um, <laughs> I would make notes and I would then jot that down onto a piece of paper and slide it into the folder. So say the firm was, I don't know, um, Jones Day, I would go onto lawcareers.net, look for the Jones Day profile on lawcareers.net, read through it, take my time, read through it, and then I would make key notes. I would then have a Jones Day section in my folder and slot that in. So that was the second thing I did. It's been a good few years since I was doing training contract applications, but I still remember the pain. I remember what it felt like to go on law firms' websites, and honestly, it would look like everyone just went to the same PR firm, and all that changed was the title of the firm. It looks like they were all saying the same thing. No, there is an art to this, there is an art to this. Okay, let me tell you. Let's talk about law firms' strap lines, okay? Important. Listen 
carefully. So if a firm uses um, what may seem a quote unquote cheesy slogan, then you are winning because there's a lot of information about what the firm is actually looking for that's contained within those strap lines or slogan. So for example, if a law firm is talking about attracting the boldest, um, then they are probably looking to attract people with the sharpest minds and who can evidence this with grades. So it's highly likely, I'm not saying that this is 100% true, but I'm just saying that if we're to break down what I'm saying and to distill what I'm saying and bring, bring it down to basics, they probably put emphasis on grades, even though they may not be blatantly saying that. Similarly, if a law firm uses um, the word, for instance, like global, that will tell you a lot about the sort of person that they are trying to attract. Now you can use this information on one of the questions that will probably come up in your application forms, which is why do you want to apply to this firm? Now I'll do a whole separate video on questions and answers and using my examples if that's required and if people want to see that. But yeah, just pay attention to the slogans that law firms use, please and thank you. What I just told you guys about the slogans and stuff is not anything that was told to me personally it's something that I had to find out through experience right and it's all good I'm happy to share this experience with you but um, I'm just saying that like it's just something that I had to pick up along the way so it's not something that I knew so I don't want anybody sitting there being like oh my gosh why didn't I know this before I didn't people did I didn't okay let's work through one actual example um, of a law firm that I did look at here um, and I haven't opened this in years so, boy, let's see what we've got in here. Dang young. I have like interview questions and all sorts in here. Wow, this is really, really bringing it back. Okay, so, one of the slogans here says, exceptional lawyers without exception. I'm gonna cover the name of the firm if I can. It's not Ashurst, but hopefully you can see that. Okay, exceptional lawyers without exception. So again, that would indicate that they are looking for people who are probably operating at really, really high level. They've got stellar academics. I said stellar. They've got really good academics and they have like a really, really, really sharp legal mind. Now, obviously you really do need to be um, quite smart to be a lawyer regardless okay however there are some firms that you'll find that place more emphasis on things such as creativity or um or teamwork etc so it's very different the way that you go okay and this tells you a lot about the sort of firms that i was um applying to if i look at them actually which is quite interesting so that's that i hope that helps so after i looked at the firms slogan if i wasn't put off by the website initially and the sort of people that i thought that they were trying to attract then begs the question as to what did you do after that what do, what are you actually looking for when you go onto the firm's website so there are a number of things that you look for when you're on the firm's website and i guess this is the right time to say by the way guys i have a in-depth checklist um, which is available to people the link will be in the description below you can access that checklist and it's a checklist that I use and I start to religiously to ensure that I um, had researched the firms properly to, or to a standard that I felt comfortable with so there's certain things that you look for on the firm's website so um, you look at practice areas you would look at press releases, I looked at annual reports. So for those of you that don't know what a company's annual report is, it's a report that is published on a yearly basis by the company, which gives you an in-depth analysis as to the firm's activities during that year, including information on their financial position. It's usually a document that is put out there for investors, um, in the company etc however I found it really useful to know what the firm's strategy was did they um, reach their goals did they reach their KPIs how are they looking financially what would their next um, areas of focus be etc so look into that look at 
what the trainees think about the firm, look at the actual training contract program. Um, I'm not sure if I said look at press releases, look at re recent deals that they've um, worked on that would usually be in press releases, I guess, but it may be on another um, aspect of the website. Also look at any CSR, which is corporate social responsibility that the firm's into that you may want to get involved in um, that will give you a feel for the firm, the sort of areas that they are focused on as well in terms of community and giving back. I would also look for any like messages, welcome messages from um, the CEO um, or the chairman of the company slash law firm that you're looking to apply to as well. There's loads of other things, but they are contained in my checklist. So yeah, have a look at that too. See if you can find all of that information. After that, I would then look at a website. I'm not sure if it's still around actually, which is quite bad of me called All About Law. And again, I would look at the firm profile on this website just to see if there's any additional information that I may have missed out on. That doesn't have to be an in-depth check. They're usually pretty good with providing summaries or from what I remember, they were pretty good with that. Um, also look at things like Roll On Friday, Legal Cheat 2, um, and just see what, you know what they're really good for actually? They were really good at providing insight um, from a employee perspective in regards to the firm. So for instance, they would publish tables about what it's like to work at, I don't know, let's say, I'm not gonna name any names actually, what it's like to work at X firm. They would give you all the goss, such as the average start time, average end time, the benefits, um, the salaries, those sort of things, which I think is always good and always juicy and made it quite fun to research. Um, by the way, I must say that I'm constantly pulling out information. So when I'm on the website, if I find um, any sort of like annual reports, etc., I would print that off and then I would highlight it um, and gather the relevant bits of information from that and put it onto um, a spreadsheet or um, a page of notes I had for the firm. So that's that. After that, I would then try and use my own connections. So I would look for people that worked at the law firm. To so say it was Linklaters I was applying to, I'd be like, do I know anyone at Linklaters? Nine times out of 10, I did not know anyone. I started off in this industry not knowing anyone. So all of the connections that I now have was built from ground up, I promise you. And if you don't have any connections and you were like me, then what you've got to do is you've got to make those connections. So go on LinkedIn, start adding people, start asking to meet up for coffees, start making it easier for them though, by the way. When you ask for a coffee, don't say, oh yeah, can I meet you for a coffee? Um, and then be like, yeah, can you come to me? I'm like two hours away. No, you've got to be determined. You've got to make it so easy for them, right? That all they want to do is say yes, okay? So start making connections, follow the law firm on social media, and I don't mean like you have to press the follow button, but just be aware of them on social media. A lot of firms now are doing Q and A's, which I think is really cool, on social media where you can just, they'll give you like an hour, for instance, say it's on a Friday, and then you can just tweet them, ask questions. If there was any gaps in the information that I had when I was doing my research, this was my time to fill in those gaps. So I would be asking all sorts of questions and sometimes they wouldn't know the answers and they would say, can I get back to you? And I would say, yes, please do. Here's my email. And I built up connections with grad recruiters through that. So there's a little tip for you. So make those connections, find out what it's really like to work in those firms, find out the deals that they've been involved in, the projects that they've been involved in, the day-to-day -day work that they undertake, um, and that should help with your research as well. So then the last thing that I did is I made a note of all of the key trends at the time. So it wasn't Brexit at the time, but say it was Brexit, I would have had Brexit on my list, I would have had, um, I don't know, technology, so like AI, all the different forms of technology, cryptocurrency, all of that. And I would then do a bit of research to see what the firm was doing in that space. So how are they utilizing technology in their everyday practices? And then I would use that to obviously form my answers as to, I don't know, what interests you about the firm? What do you think you can bring to the firm? Why do you think you're a great fit for the firm? And if it's, you know, I can see that they're really involved in tech, 
um, I would tailor my answer accordingly to that. So, you know, that is another way. The final thing that I would then do is I would then go through my checklist and I would make sure that I um, have ticked pretty much everything off and I became really, really anal about finding the answers to the questions and they're all out there, they are all out there. So, like I said, I've got this checklist available. The information on how to obtain this checklist is going to be in the description bar below. Um, hopefully it helps someone. It's something that I use, that I made myself. Um, and like I said, after using this checklist, sticking to this checklist, I received three training contract offers. Woo, woo, woo. So, um, I'm just hoping that this helps someone. So guys, that's what I've got for you. Hopefully it's not too daunting. Once you get into the rhythm of things, it actually becomes quite fun. Stop thinking about the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into preacher mode quickly. Stop thinking about the end goal, as in like, I've gotta get this training contract, I've gotta get this training contract, I've gotta get this training contract. Stop that and just start thinking about one firm at a time and really giving your best and your all into this application. So, um hopefully that helps if it does please you've got to let me know interact with me otherwise i yeah i won't know whether or not i should keep making videos like this so if it does help please do let me know by leaving a comment um or giving me a thumbs up just so that i know that okay this is something that is helping you guys or something that you guys i um, wanted to hear and then i know what sort of videos to put out there because all i want to do is share the information that i um have learned so that is all so thank you guys for watching good luck with all of your applications good luck with researching enjoy the process if you use the checklist let me know if it's helpful let me know by the way if you get responses from firms etc um and i will speak to you soon bye example I'm just going to read out a couple of notes that I had scribbled down about a law firm so I said that they're a mid, mid sized law firm they're appealing to someone who wants to work as part of a wider team on good quality work um, I put down all of the um, keywords that I thought um, I had that I thought they were looking for and that I possess so interpersonal ambitious commercial approach drive, motivation, resilience, understanding of people, um, the firm focuses on expertise, um, partners invest in recruitment process, I noted their award that they had down, they've got a distinctive international approach, um, and they maximise my strengths and develop my skills is what I thought. So I thought that was quite interesting. Um, again, I would pull down all of the information. I'm just going through this now. I'd pull out all of the information. This is so interesting. Again, quality, client relationships, innovation, international global expansions. Um, I've highlighted here that this firm um, wants people who are confident and enthusiastic with the communication skills to build vibrant relationships. So straight away, I was probably thinking, oh, okay, well, this is how I've built relationships here, here and here, and this is one what I'm gonna put in my application and say that I would like to continue this as a trainee, etc. and I can build relationships with clients, all that jazz. Um, but yeah, so, ah! gosh, oh my gosh, it's all falling apart. Ugh! It was worth it, I will sort that out in a minute.